Hello. 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 Hi. Josh. Hey, welcome back to our stupid reaction, Corbin. I'm high. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter for more juicy content. Thank you to everybody who supports some Patreon follows to the account, subscribe, like button. Today, we have a video of the uh, train making scene in uh, Vadis Night Part 1. Wonderful. Uh, and I, unfortunately, I think it's mostly just they show you some behind the scenes and not really talking about it. Sadly. Okay. So it's, That's it's, okay. It's not going to fulfill what we want, unfortunately, but we were sent it a lot. Okay. Uh, so it go, like goes into... Um, shows how some of the shots were done. Sh like the one shot. Right. Train scene, right. obviously. Um, and a lot of people were upset with us when we were talking. They said that the beginning part wasn't VFX at all. We were talking about when the train fell. When the fell, train fell. It, if it wasn't VFX, it definitely looked VFX. It is. Uh, yeah, that's, if the, it, it, that's if, the part we were yeah, talking about. If the train fall was not CGI, then something extraordinarily bad happened in the post-production edit and color correction or something because yeah. it's very clearly a CGI train fall at the end. Yeah, I mean... And we also didn't fault the film for it. No. <laughs> also, the train might have fell, but they might have VFXed it in certain ways in the fall. Correct. Because maybe they couldn't, like, they had, like, one shot it and they didn't want to... Right. I don't know. Right, yeah. That part of it definitely felt vfx that was the only one <laughs> yeah everything else everything else was genius um so so if, uh, yeah i'm looking forward to this um but let's just obviously if you haven't seen a review of it please go watch it obviously we loved and if you that. haven't seen it go yeah. watch it before you watch our review and we will obviously be seeing the second one yes hopefully in theater yes this next time so here we go wow I That's exactly what I thought. <laughs> Talk about not giving up secrets. Practical. Love it. They built it. I like it. Yeah, yeah. Sure. That's probably where a lot of the funding went. I was wondering how they did that part. Yeah, so walk off the crane. Yeah, that, oh, part, yeah, that part too. Wonderful. I was going to talk about that part. Nice. I would love to know how long it took for this entire thing from in, from day one creation to choreography to completion. What do you think? They had at least four camera people work on this shot? That's what I was going to talk about at the end, yeah. I was hoping they... Oh, yeah. Okay, so it actually fell. So maybe they slowed it down and that made it look bad? I don't know. I can uh, just, I can just, and I was watching it on, I, I wasn't just watching it on my laptop. I was watching it on a big screen. Same. And it, it looked that way. So I don't know what they did to it. Maybe you guys or somebody is involved with the film. Because um, I would have much rather them, if it's not, if they didn't use any VFX for the helping of it to fall, just let it fall. Because that would have been better. Yeah. Right? And th it may be that they saw the final edit and some things were revealed that were part of the the magic of the shot that they wanted to cover. So they added some CGI to the actual real fall. But irrespective, don't let that take you away from the no. genius of this, this no. sequence. Absolutely not. Um, the, I'm, I'm guessing there were at least five, yeah, at least five camera people. I was people. thinking about that because one of the brilliant things about one shot is not only the camera guy he obviously but he has to look at the camera he is not looking at his feet he can't look at anything he has about probably at minimum two to three people around him making sure he doesn't fall and at each point 
coming out. So it's like this incredible, like, um, synchronized swimming kind of event that needs to happen. Um, but yeah, so because obviously the guy on the crane can't be the guy that's holding it because he has to already be strapped. He has in. to be harnessed in, and so it has to be a seamless no transition right. from one uh, a now camera you, man. You could get whoever was sitting with the camera. They could, from the crane shot to the walking on the train, they could have had an assistant detach while they go from the crane and then walk on. That might have been it. But you already had it the had to, on. Yeah, it, it it had to have been handed off. And that's the other thing is you have to have, my suspicion is the stabilizer went with every single person. Oh, yeah. They didn't but that's, connect that's and the issue. reconnect. Like, if you're holding off and it's on a stabilizer that's not like a thing you can just take off either no so, and then you have that to, leads me to believe it was one person and you have to choreograph everything in such a way so that for example when the crane shot finishes and let's say the crane shot it looks like that becomes a handoff to an actual handheld shot where they're walking on the train and then that comes out and they give it to the person on the harness you have to from the interim of the transition from crane to the walk before it gets to the harness, you have to clear the crane so that when you do the full farther away shot, there's no crane in your shot. Yeah. That's one of the most amazing things about this is not just that it's a continual shot with all of these different places, but the framing of each of those shots has to ensure that you don't incorporate any of the magic that's been going on around you exactly. and make a mistake, which I didn't see a single flaw except the one little CGI yeah, reference. Yeah, you guys, if you... Think you know what we're talking about? I'd love obviously. to see more, like a full ten like, minute. Oh yeah, a full behind like, the scenes. Him talking about yes. it, that would be from concept to creation. Um, because these videos, even though they show you a little bit, that it's not really like a behind the scenes. You need to know what's going on and and talking about it. It's one of the best parts of filmmaking is watching the magic. The magic of filmmaking is all the people behind the scenes. Um, it's not just the actors. I know, and they're the ones that get all the the, the credit. And the directors, um, but man, it's the it's the crew that really. That's what was. That's what's fun about watching older films, like when we watched Frankenstein last night, because Frankenstein is 1931, so it's just a couple years after sound has become incorporated into film, yeah. right? And most shots of films from the 1930s are stagnant shots because there wasn't a lot of capability, and there's this one gorgeous shot. Because it's the, the 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 Frankenstein house, not the mansion, but the house that his wife lives in, and they go. There's a there's a there's a bedroom, and then there's a main hall, and there's another bedroom, and so there's a lot of people there, and he wants to go talk to her in private, and it's the one shot where you watch them track, and there's no walls because they built the house in a soundstage here on the the back lot at Universal, and they just go from one room through a wall, <laughs> next room through a wall into that room and all of that with the back in the day Built i just I, I said what an amazing that would be you could is there a documentary somewhere about the history of cinematography and the advent of certain things that take you from the days of the the, the silent films to today those, yeah. i i would you could do a, a documentary series on that i would love to watch that the sun um not to uh... It says Roger Mulley's. I know books have been written. It says Roger Mulley's sure. doing. Um, yeah, and he's. I think he's just producing. Actually, yeah. is okay. What I found out, um, but I, and I think it's like a inspired by the father of Indian cinema, and like it's an ode to Indian cinema as a whole. That's awesome. Which you can't spell Indian cinema or talk about it without actually Roger Mulley. No. <laughs> if, if, if you're going current, mm -hmm. like if you're going from conception to current, of course he is. As crucial to current Indian cinema as, as anybody, uh, if not the most crucial in terms of what Indian cinema has become now. For sure. Uh, and the budgets that they have now are because S.S. Rajamuli has found that success. Yes. Uh, and obviously w with what he did with, you know, Bahubali being the start of, and not, not, I know it's not the start of his, but in terms of like why he's able to do now what he's able to do. Yeah. Because of Bahubali. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, and, and now... After Triple R, the global 
appreciation of and desire to see more Indian cinema. Exactly. Yeah. Anyways, uh, if there's more videos of making, obviously, please let us know. If you haven't seen our review, once again, please or go this watch film. it. Please, please see watch this the film. film. Very much looking forward to the second part. I'm guessing it comes out next year, right? Yep. Yeah, it had said 2024. Um, at least I'm that's the current they listing. It at the exact same time, obviously. Because Probably. They showed those stupid scenes. Yeah, at like the end PS1 of it. and 2. Um, so let us know down below. Josh!